Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Deposed Emir of Kano, Mohamed Sidusi II, departs Awe, Nasarawa State for Abuja and Roots, Lagos, following court order releasing him from detention after his dethronement by the Kano State Government. Federal government confirmed second case of COVID-19 in Nigeria has tested negative to the virus after week-long treatment and care as 179 contact cases are released from isolation. President Buhari directs further consultations by committee set up to review impact of coronavirus on the nation's economy after receiving its interim report. And top U.S. commander for the Middle East says threat posed from Iran remains high after America's retaliatory airstrikes on an Iran-backed militia in Iraq. Plus business sports, news from Abuja, the FCT later, international news from our London studios. Our website, channelstv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channels Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms, Apple TV, Android TV, Fire and Roku TV. Well, let's now examine this issue further, talking about the coronavirus outbreak, especially as it's affecting Nigeria. Joining us is the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Olorunimbe Mamora. I would like to welcome you to the News at 10. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. It appears to be cherry news coming from the Minister of Health earlier today, the second confirmed um, case testing negative and then the index case improving. Um, looking at the dynamics of the cases across the world, Italy and perhaps Spain now, what exactly is Nigeria doing that maybe some of the other countries are getting wrong? <laughs> well, I, I think um, the most important thing to say is that um, the preparedness and the response um, without taking anything for granted. Um, one, no country should be complacent at all. Immediately there was outbreak in China. The uh, preparedness and response uh, measures were activated and they are taken to the highest level. So we tried as much as possible to just expect whatever. So we put in place the uh, emergency um, operation centers, both at the state and at the national level. So the national level is the coordinating, um, the national coordinating center, so that we could just do what we needed to do in terms of our taking charge at the ports of, you know, of entry, particularly the airport, and of course uh, we put in place the self-reporting. Uh, forms for uh, travelers coming into the country to fill because we, we, we were we put more emphasis as it were or paid more attention to the airport because we felt that if any case uh, were to be imported such a case would come in through the airport. And that is not to say we didn't give uh, consideration to the land borders and the To sea. think that the World Health Organization put Nigeria and 13 other countries as some of the high risk uh, in terms of this disease before we had our index case. But let's look at what the Lagos State Commissioner for Health said about the index case, and that is um, that it still has some secretion of the virus. Please expatiate on that. Uh, yes. Well, um, usually what is checked is uh, the, you know, the viral load in the patient. And um, before you can say the patient is uh, free, you, you have to measure, as it were, uh, test the presence of the uh, virus in the bloodstream. And then, of course, you do that on two occasions with interval of 40, I mean, 48 hours. And when you cannot detect, it may be either the, the system with, with treatment has been able to take care, I mean, that is immune system, or that uh, you can't even detect it at all. Yeah, that is, the level is not such that you can detect in the bloodstream. And that's when you can say that, yes, he is not in position. That means it's not, it's not in, in position to uh, infect people around. Yeah. 
Now, some countries are taking, I mean, restricting travelers. I mean, several of the African countries, I'm sure you saw in the reports, just their first case, you know, taking sweeping measures. Um, what kind of risks are we taking if we're only staying with screening and surveillance rather than perhaps stronger restrictions? Well, I think the first thing to say is that um, the world body, WHO, World Health Organization, which is the regulatory authority on health matters throughout the world, they normally issue guidelines, you know, to uh, help countries in terms of uh, uh, response activities and what have you. But having said that, each country is also uh, in position to determine its own uh, measures based on its own experience and the realities on ground. Uh, we feel very strongly that as, as at this point in time, uh, we, we, we are not really convinced that we should you know, institute such measures. And that's why we are not giving ban on what, what have you. We're not. All right. We'd like to thank you, Minister of State for Health, Dr. Lauren Ben Mamara. Thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you very much for inviting me. Besides the report on the COVID-19 impact on the economy, President Buhari's itinerary today included receiving the President of Guinea-Bissau, Mr. Sissoko Mbalo, at the State House. The meeting between Mr. Mbalo and President Buhari lasted for about 30 minutes. Guinea-Bissau's president, who was paying a private visit to Nigeria, praised President Buhari for the role played by Nigeria in his country during their recent electioneering process, describing Nigeria as a true symbol of democracy. Mr. Mbalo, who spoke through an interpreter, describes the crisis that rocked the election as a mistake. Okay. Let's take you to Abuja Studios where Linda Akigwe has some more stories. Hello, Linda. Hello, Millicent. Now, as controversy continues to rock the All Progressives Congress, the acting national organizing secretary of the party, Mr. Mohamed Ibrahim, insists the planned National Executive Committee meeting of the APC, fixed for March the 17th, will hold. Addressing the news conference in Abuja, Mr. Ibrahim says some desperate party members are circulating false information that the next meeting may be postponed at the last minute due to the crisis. He explains that all is set for the meeting to hold and there is no going back. The story making the round that the INEC meeting may either not hold or be scuttled is untrue and unjustified. I wish to assure Nigerians that the organization of the NEC meeting has already reached an advanced stage and it will proceed as planned. I wish to advise those who are trying to distract the attention of the party with rumors of possible last minute cancellation of the NEC meeting and or scuttling it to desist from spreading such rumors, we are compelled to conclude that there is a plan by desperate forces working with interests outside the system to create a false flag as a strategy for distraction or distracting our great party. This negative plan, I dare say, is dead on arrival. The move from politics to security and the Nigerian Air Force says the air tax force of Operation Lafi Adoli has destroyed four a Boko Haram terrorist meeting venue at Kadi Wanzama on the fringes of a Sambisa forest in Borno State. According to a statement by the Air Force spokesman, Air Commodore Ibikunle Daramola, the strike is the latest in a series of attacks carried out by the air interdiction operation codenamed Decisive Edge. 
He explains that the airstrike was carried out on March the 8th following surveillance and reconna reconnaissance missions, which established that the settlement was being used as a Boko Haram staging post for planning attacks. Attack aircraft dispatched by the Air Tax Force engaged the location, completely destroying the target compounds within the settlement. The airstrikes also eliminated several of the terrorists as they hid out in the target structures. And still on internal security, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, has announced plans by the force to set up community policing committees beginning from the ward levels. The police chief explains that the plan has become imperative following the rise in kidnappings, banditry and crimes in the country. He further explains that members of the committee are expected to partner with the force in identifying security challenges in their communities as well as formulate plans on how to address them. The IGP was speaking at a meeting with senior officials of the force in Abuja. <laughs> With increasingly sophisticated and enterprising criminal threats, our community policing approach recognizes that the police alone, as a law enforcement agency, does not have the exclusive capacity to solely manage the security threats. Thus, a multi-agency and citizen-driven approach remains the most potent strategy to deal with the current trend in crime. The success of the community policy initiative in Nigeria, like in other policing claims depends largely on the extent to which strategic police managers, particularly state commissioners of police, area commanders, and divisional police officers understand its concepts and practice. This conference shall therefore dwell extensively on exposing senior police officers to the concept and implementation plan of the community policing strategy. In the course of the meeting, therefore, the specific roles of police managers at various command level and other strategic actors in the implementation process shall also be clearly delineated. The senior police officers here seated shall also have shall also be adequately briefed on the modalities for the vetting and certification of personalities that will be members of the community policing committees. This is with a view to ensuring that only credible and suitable persons are appointed into the committees. When the news at 10 returns, leading financial institution FBN Holdings clarifies speculations of First Bank's merger with Polaris and Heritage Banks. That's some business news. Plus, top U.S. commander says threat posed from Iran remains high and more from a London bureau in around the world in five. Join us again.